Hello all, this is Wallace Moon, and this is my fourth failed Minecraft video. Today I'm going to be showing you a clock that I have created. It's about to switch. As you can see, it's nearly dawn, I dusk. And we're just going to watch as it changes. I will go through, um, we will watch straight through until night, which will take about a minute and a half. And then I will explain the inner workings. As you can see, it's starting to shift. And there we are. We are now at dusk. You can see the moon's coming up. The sun's going down. This could have better accuracy. Uh, it's just this is just a prototype, so uh, I didn't put go all in. And it looks like the demonstration is going to end early. We're going to restart the server in about five minutes. So, once the sun completely disappears from view, it's going to start moving again. There we go, it's moving as the moon comes up. So, as the, the display is an even number and all the graphics are an odd number, they're always misplaced a bit. Basically, we are using Falsebook as best we can. Uh, once the server restarts, I'll show you a full cycle. I'm, I'll given time to dilate it so it'll uh, be watchable. As you can see, it's got some, uh, on the inside, it's got pistons that push the graphic around. You can see the sun graphic on the side. The back also has a mirror of the front. This way it could be a two-sided clock if you so wish. We are using a mod called uh, Falsebook. Falsebook has these receiver and transmitter circuits. So more on that in a second. We're going to delve into the clock. The way the clock works is that at the very top there is a standard Minecraft clock here. Hooked up to it is a receiver. This receiver will tells the clock when it needs to update and it'll automatically stop the clock from basically turning when it reaches the desired point. This right here is the delay circuit, which just takes uh, transmits the signal to each row of pistons on each corner. You can see the transmitters right there. The uh, delay will make it so that it turns nicely, and the, the extra block that pushes it around will return to its original starting position. For detection, to tell when the clock has reached its desired point, we are using a modified version of punch, uh, punch cards. Uh, you can look up Minecraft punch cards, and you'll see some designs like this. Basically, glass is a transparent block and will not transmit redstone, whereas wood will. So as this glass layer gets pushed around, when the redstone, no, when the wood goes over a redstone torch, let's see if we can see it, it makes the connection to the uh, wire, and then the wire goes into a transmitter, which goes to our time sensing circuit. Over here is our time sensing circuit. It's just a bunch of uh, AND gates hooked up to another false book circuit, the MC0230, which is an is it day timer. And the two parameters are basically your start time and your end time. The time goes from 0 to 24,000 for an entire day cycle. Day lasts from 0 to 12. It's the longest phase of the day. It's a full 10 minutes. And uh, basically activates this right here. When the clock is in position, this signal will go off. This is the receiver you saw inside the clock, where the redstone that uh, 
is connected to the wood block. And when both are activated, it will power, as you can see right here, this is the night sensor. It will power the circuit and turn off the internal clock, which shifts the um, clock. Anyway, we will be back in a minute, and I will go ahead and record a full 10 minutes and uh, speed it up so you can see the whole clock in action. <laughs> 